reading uh, Advent Day 23 and the reading is from Ruth chapter 4 verse 13 and 15 to 15. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. Then he went to her and the Lord enabled her to conceive. Then she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous through throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons he has given in birth. Who would have dreamed? It's all about the baby. Birth announcement. Birth announcements are big business these days. Baby scan photos, gender reveal balloons, elaborate Facebook statuses. But today in Roof, we have an altogether different birth announcement. The last half of the book has been an exciting will they, won't they build up to coming up, build up to the coming together of Roof and Boaz. Yet with the se seeming breakneck speed, spot the five verbs in quick succession, succession in verse 13. We rush past the wedding celebration, straight past the con consummation, and so quickly discover the nar narrator's real interest. The Lord enabled Ruth to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. It's all about the baby. Unto us a son is given. Only twice in Ruth does the narrator describe the Lord doing something. In Exodus 34, 6-7. Each one is significant and together they, they uh, upend the story. The first occurs when the Lord ends the famine and provides bread for his people. The second comes here as the Lord enables Ruth to conceive. Boaz was probably at least the generation older than Ruth and we know Ruth had no children from the 10 years of their first marriage. Yet the Lord provides a child. And so the women of Bethlehem burst forth in praise. They remember when empty and unrecognisable Naomi returned, heartbroken to Bethlehem. Now they celebrate that the Lord hasn't left Naomi without a guardian re redeemer. But hang on, why this focus on a guardian redeemer? Have they started talking about Boaz again? What about the baby? The redeemer is here. As we ponder the woman's words... The, though we see though we see it as very much the baby they have in mind for your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth of course what boaz did was incredible incredibly noble but only an heir could secure naomi and elimelech's um, family line and inheritance now that there that now that this heir Air has been born, the party can really start. Just look at this baby's job description. He will renew your life and sustain you, sustain you in your old age. The word renew here is the same as return, used repeatedly in chapter one. Just as the Lord had returned, returned Naomi <coughs> to the promised land, this child reconnects Naomi in an everlasting inheritance that returns her, her to life, returns her life to her. Kindness enfleshed in kindness. Read verse 15 again and note how the women, with a moving display of respect to this baby's mother, highlight Ruth's role in Naomi's life. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. Nowhere else in the book is the verb to love used without a doubt. Ruth's love for her mother-in-law is the real love story. The fact, the fact that Ruth is worth more than seven sons is quite something given where just that we've celebrated a son. But this has been Naomi's surprising journey of discovery, finding the Lord's extravagant loving kindness and fleshed in the most unexpected of places, her Moabite daughter-in-law. Daughter